we asked Dr. Anna Limke to answer eight common questions she hears about opioid use. What is an opioid? An opioid is any molecule that binds and stimulates the opioid receptor. And we have lots and lots of opioid receptors in our brains. These chemicals occur in nature um, in the form of resin from the poppy plant. But these chemicals can also now be synthesized in the laboratory without any poppy plant precursor. So for example, fentanyl, which is a very potent and deadly opioid, doesn't need a poppy plant at all. It can be synthesized cheaply and easily in a laboratory. Opioids have three main impacts on the brain. The first is that they can relieve short-term pain. The second is that they slow down breathing and slow down uh, heart rate. Um, and the third is that they cause the release of dopamine, which is our reward neurotransmitter, in a part of the brain called the reward pathway, which is what makes us get high. Is heroin an opioid? Yes, heroin is an opioid. Heroin is morphine, which is derived from opium. And it's morphine with two acetyl groups added to it. So it's really, really similar to morphine. And in fact, heroin was invented by chemists working for Bayer Laboratories in Germany who were trying to come up with an opioid that would have the pain-relieving properties of morphine without being addictive. And they were so excited when they came up with heroin, and that's why they called it uh, heroish, which is German for heroic. But of course, the best laid plans, heroin turned out to be incredibly addictive and gave way to the narcomania of the early 1900s until it was effectively outlawed. Is codeine an opioid? Yes, codeine is an opioid. It's not a very potent opioid. It's typically found in cough and cold remedies, but it is an opioid. It does have the potential for addiction and all of the other harms that we see with opioids. Is meth an opioid? No, meth is not an opioid. Meth is a stimulant, also highly addictive, and very deadly, especially when combined with opioids. Is Suboxone an opioid? Okay, so Suboxone is the trade name for buprenorphine, and buprenorphine is an opioid. It is a unique opioid with properties that make it effective in the treatment of opioid addiction. How is Suboxone different from other opioids? So this is a great question because Suboxone or buprenorphine is an opioid that we specifically prescribe to treat opioid addiction. And of course, on the face of it, it's very counterintuitive to think about using an opioid to treat an opioid addiction. But we now have multiple placebo-controlled trials across generations and across countries showing that buprenorphine is, in fact, effective treatment for some people with severe opioid addiction. And it has unique properties which might make it the safest opioid. Let me tell you about those properties. There are essentially three properties that buprenorphine has that make it a safe opioid and also uniquely effective for the treatment of opioid addiction. It has first a very long half-life. What does that mean? It means it hangs around in the bloodstream at a steady state for a long amount of time. Why is that important for treating opioid addiction? Because it gets people with opioid addiction out of that terrible cycle of intoxication, withdrawal and drug seeking, to intoxication, withdrawal and drug seeking, which is so debilitating and zaps all of their energy and creativity and willpower, and instead creates a steady state of opioid in the bloodstream so that they're able to focus on other recovery work. So first, long half-life. Second, buprenorphine has a ceiling effect on respiratory suppression. So you may remember that one of the main impacts of opioids on the brain is that they can slow down breathing and slow down heart rate. 
And in fact, that is the way that people die from opioids, right? They fall asleep, they stop breathing, their heart stops, and they don't wake up again. That's sometimes called an opioid overdose. Buprenorphine is really unique from other opioids because it doesn't tend to slow down breathing and slow down heart rate the way that other opioids do. So it's considered a very safe opioid. Third, buprenorphine has a very tight binding affinity in that opioid receptor. So remember we talked about opioids being any molecule that binds to the opioid receptors in our brain and stimulates that opioid receptor. But we didn't talk about binding affinity, and that has to do with how long that chemical and how tightly that chemical or that opioid binds that receptor. And buprenorphine has a very tight binding affinity, which means that once buprenorphine is locked into that receptor, other opioids can't get in. So it in fact works a little bit like a blocker, which is really helpful. It means somebody who's using buprenorphine for opioid use disorder, if they use heroin, probably won't get any effect from the heroin because buprenorphine is in there binding the receptor. So when I teach my medical students about how buprenorphine works to treat opioid use disorder, I always ask them to learn the buprenorphine dance, which goes like this, long half-life, ceiling effect on respiratory suppression, and tight binding affinity. Here, do it with me now. Ready? Here we go. Long half-life, ceiling effect on respiratory suppression, and a tight binding affinity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How long do opioids stay in the urine? So first of all, the answer to that really depends on the opioid. The opioids that last longer in our system will hang out in urine longer. Um, opioids that are shorter acting will hang out in urine for less time. So for example, a shorter acting opioid like morphine can be detected in the urine for up to three days, whereas a longer acting opioid like methadone or buprenorphine can be detected in the urine for up to 14 days. What are the signs and symptoms of opioid withdrawal? So the signs and symptoms of opioid withdrawal are uh, typically that we will release liquids from every orifice, so to speak, when uh, we are in opioid withdrawal. It's associated with uh, nausea and vomiting, uh, with diarrhea, with lacrimation or tearing, with sweating. Um, opioid withdrawal is also characterized by muscle fasciculation, so involuntary muscle jerks. And this is where the term kicking the habit comes from, because people who will try to stop using opioids will often experience these involuntary muscle jerks. Opioid withdrawal can also feel very much like the flu. So people can get chills, they can get fevers, they really feel like they've caught some kind of viral syndrome. And then opioid withdrawal is also characterized by great big pupils. And one way to remember this is that when people are in opioid withdrawal, they have these great big pupils because they're seeking their drug. That's just a mnemonic that we teach in medical school as a way to remember what happens with the pupils when people are in opioid withdrawal. Typically, opioid withdrawal is not life-threatening, but for people who have other serious medical comorbidities, it certainly can be. If you or someone you love is struggling with an opioid use disorder, please reach out for treatment, treatment works, contact your healthcare provider, talk to an addiction medicine specialist, there's help.